Um, so today we are going to see uh, chapter chapter one part three. Uh, sorry, part part one chapter three, which is a continuation of the previous presentations done last week by Dr. Shams and Dr. Ibrahim. So uh, last uh, last week we saw an introduction to PyTorch and then uh, some some more advanced. Uh, uh, presentation uh, that covers, I think, training actual models and using them to do prediction and the rest. So today we are coming backwards to see the basics of uh, Tensor. So because I think in the first lecture we saw how we do how we do deep learning. So to do deep learning, uh, I think uh, Dr. Shamsu uh, introduced us to first the need for converting the data into a readable form. So, and the readable form, uh, especially with deep learning, is uh, converting it into tensor. So today we are going to see tensor and the kinds of operations that are possible in tensors. So um, are you all with me or is my network breaking? Uh, we are good. Okay, so no Nigeria, we have to be asking distance so how what are tensors so uh most but of i course, have a question so, yeah yeah so why um why can't we use numpy tensor and we just go to um we create um different kind of tensor in PyTorch? so usually numpy are arrays and uh, the way you store array and the way you store tensors are two different things so usually tensors are uh developed uh, with uh, with with speed in mind, with with different characteristics that we'll see uh, in the course of going yeah 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 that's, going yeah. to so, this chapter. Okay. So yeah. they are developed specifically for doing deep learning. So and we'll see why arrays, why lists, why because uh, basically tensors are just lists. Uh, they have almost the same structure. It's just that maybe uh, how you save them in the memory and the rest are different. But most of the, uh, in, in, in addition to uh, more advanced methods that can be, uh, that have been developed for tensors, but most of the basic things such as indexing and the rest are just like in, in, in list uh, and arrays. But how you save them, usually in deep learning, you try to maximize the memory uh, storage. You don't, uh, you don't waste unnecessary memory. So also the 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 amount in which you do read and write. So you you need a very like a very a very optimal data structure that will enable you to do uh, to do read and write very easily. Right. So yeah. So um, two things I think you mentioned here. So um, you mentioned like one core thing is like um, fast. Um, because uh, tensor as uh, contiguous uh, store, and at the back end background they are simply lists. It just depends on how the shape you have. But one thing also that tensors differs greatly with um, NumPy is that um, tensors they support um, what we call um, the GPU support, right? So yeah. like NumPy they don't have GPU support, um, and also uh, Num uh, Python, uh, Python tensor they have just GPU support, right? Okay, let's go. So I think uh, 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 another like another additional information here. I think Doctor mentioned contiguous. So also uh, during transformation in tensor, you will see there are situations where they are not contiguous. So you can convert them to contiguous, and we'll see what contiguous means. So also we'll see the support for GPU and uh, the seamlessness in converting tensor to non-P arrays and converting them back to to tensors and we'll see during uh, the during the operations where these are stored. So I think in my in the left hand side of my screen you will see a notebook opened. I am using uh, Google Colab. So uh, it's it's very easier to run all of this. I think uh, the the runtime if you will see here let me change my runtime to GPU so that we'll try to see the support for GPU. Uh, this is uh, this is Colab Pro. So it's a subscription based uh, uh, 
it's, it's a subscription version of the collab. There is the free version. So uh, some of the features that you'll see in this uh, pop-up uh, window, uh, uh, specifically for the for the Google Pro, and maybe when we come to explain what collab means and its features, which I think in one of our sessions here we'll be doing, you will see all of these things. So I forgot to change uh, the runtime to have GPU. So before you came, I did mount my Google Drive because I mount my Google Drive and I clone the GTOC repository for, for deep learning with PyTorch so that we will we'll get to see, we will get to use the data folder. So I am um, mounting it now. I've already done it. So by changing the runtime, all of the sessions have been reset. So yeah, um, I think one of our session, maybe if um, we, we need to uh, have a session on how to use Colab. Um, so uh, because not everyone here like have the access to GPU. So for example, me, I can run inside my BS code. I have access to GPU, but um, all of us here maybe not have GPU, so we can we need to have a, a session uh, introducing how we can use Colab to run. Uh, uh, I mean, neural network. Yeah, maybe possibly next week before we even yeah. start. But but at this moment, um, this chapter you can run this chapter basically with your uh, CPU on your computer. Yeah. So I don't know whether we reiterated the need for installing, uh, especially Anaconda so that it will give you uh, the easier access of using notebooks, Jupyter notebooks, which are much more similar to, much more similar to, to Google Colab. So we'll see all of that. So now I think everything is set. We can start, we can start our class. So if you are with me, uh, first we said we are seeing tensors. So what are tensors? Uh, tensors are just a kind of data structure that allows you to store uh, real valued uh, numbers or floating point numbers. And all those floating point numbers are basically targeted at, at describing a particular set of data that you have for training. And that data, as we saw in, in chapter one that was introduced by Dr. Shamsu, may include images, sometimes videos, sometimes text. So depending on the task you have at hand. Um, so if we look at this diagram, we have an image, an image of like some kind of, is it a cloud or the sea and the sun? And uh, a certain uh, region in the image uh, is represented by these numbers. This is arbitrary numbers. So they might not necessarily indicate like the exact representation of that. So maybe I think it's given uh, for example sake. So, and if you see these are just basically like just a matrix. So each uh, line contains, each row contains a set of numbers uh, and the rest. So if you pass this into, into your neural networks and this is a representation of the neural network. So uh, all of these numbers will be uh, com uh, computed or manipulated. Process. Hello? Somebody go was talking? Go on, just go on. Okay, so these numbers will be computed, manipulated, and at the end you will find your, your uh, probability distribution over the expected output. So, um, so that's what they said here, the word as floating point number. So everything in the world, if you take the world as a form of a picture, as a form of uh, of of text as a form of sound, as a form of video, you can represent that instance of the world as floating point numbers, which is made easier using tensors rather than uh, 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 other data structures such, such as lists and arrays that we are familiar with in our everyday programming. So, uh, so in here you see um, a single number is scalar, which we know already. Uh, we have done the the vector, vector is just a transpose of, of a list, uh, which we know already uh, from, our, from our basic knowledge of Python or object-oriented programming. So if you transpose list, you get a vector. So, and if you have multiple vectors, you form a matrix, which is two-dimensional. In here is one-dimensional. So we can see this as what 
as uh, a vector of size, this size three. This is a vector of, uh, of a matrix of size three by three. And this now are tensors. If you see now tensors are just frames, frames of matrix. So if you have multidimensional matrix, you just have a tensor. So, and sometimes uh, these are 3D tensors. You can have many dimensional tensors as you see here. So sometimes it can be very complicated. So, and, but complication may be in the representation, but to the computer, you know, it's, it's, it's very much easy if really you know what you, you, uh, you want. So I don't know, do you have anything to add or should we go to multidimensional arrays tensors? Yeah, so um, in essence, what we are saying now, you said is that for us to do deep learning and um, anything we have, whether text, image, we must first convert it to tensor, right? So, and this tensor, how do we convert tensor? Like if it is image, how do we convert it to a tensor representation? If it is text, how do we convert it to a tensor representation so that we can do anything um, for deep learning? So this information, um, uh, how this kind of uh, different tensor convert to different representation will be discussed in the next chapter that if you are doing uh, text or image, how do you represent that in, because all of this, they have different way to represent. But at this chapter, we are not seeing the representation for particular uh, uh, for particular stuff like text or image. This is just general introduction, how tensors are, uh, uh, how tensors are represented. But in the next chapter, we'll see how we can uh, change image to tensor, how we can change text to tensor. Yeah, so that's what I have. So, um, so uh, as we go, this is a disclaimer. You will be seeing just as in chapter two. Sometimes they go ahead of themselves to to introduce uh, some features that have not been explained. So, but this uh, some, some of this you just learn them as they as they uh, as we go through. So sometimes you or we might not dwell too much on on explaining a particular point if it is not covered here. So sometimes it's just given as an example, and uh, but sometimes also they will tell you that this part of the coding you will see it in this chapter, or they will tell you that maybe in subsequent chapters you will see. So now what we are doing is basic tensors. So um, tensors are just multidimensional array which we've seen there. So you just have array uh, converted to vector, vector to matrix, matrix. Uh, multi uh, multi uh, multi dimensional matrix into into tensor. So also we, uh, we it's not necessarily that you must have multi dimensional matrix to have a tensor. You can have one dimensional matrix as a tensor. So so it's just like having let's say four here, four at on its own with the bracket and we call it a vector even though uh, it's just one dimensional. One dimensional and also having one 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 item in it. So in here we said how do uh, usually you you do uh, tensors by converting a list. So if you have a list, you convert it into tensor. So how do how, what is a list? We all know what a list is. So usually a list is just uh, you give uh, a variable is equal to you have two square brackets and everything in that is. Uh, a member in that list. You can have an empty list with nothing inside. You can have a populated list here. You can have an empty list and start populating it with the values you want and the rest. So uh, as we see here on the left-hand side, uh, we initiate our list as a number of 1.0, 2.0, and then 1.0. These are the three, three uh, values inside our list. And also maybe it might uh, be important to mention uh, I don't know, maybe it's not that important, but the difference between list, uh, set, uh, and the rest. So dictionary and the rest in Python. So maybe you might have a look at it to determine uh, what, is, uh, uh, what is obtainable in each. But as we are, uh, we are interested only in list here, so this is a list. So to get a particular element in the list, we use indexing. So uh, we all know that. So if we have, uh, we said uh, a list, or many of uh, data structures in Python are zero-based lists. So meaning you start, the index starts from zero until n minus one. So if you have n elements in the list, so the last element is n minus one. If they are in here, they are three, so three minus one, two. So the last element is two. So uh, also in, in, 
in Python, there is uh, sometimes you might not know the length of your list, but you want the last element or the second to the last element. So you can use the indexing of minus one to give you the, the last element or minus two to give you the second to the last minus three and the rest. So, so you will be seeing this uh, a bit, maybe not in very deep. So also to, you can uh, reassign the value in a particular index in a list. So by just calling the index of the list and giving the new value to be assigned. So in here, we are changing the element in the last position, which is position two in, uh, in A to three. So as you see in here, after we set the value of uh, A to A two to three, uh, uh, list changes. So now, uh, usually, So internet then you see that I believe so. I can't hear him also. Right. Um it is uh hello it is yeah yeah that's it. <laughs> in Nigeria internet. Yeah. Okay, so let's wait and see what are you with me now? Sorry, my internet. Ah, okay. <laughs> no problem. You are welcome, sir. Okay. I have to reshare your screen. Yes, I am doing it now. So, are you seeing my screen? Yep. Sorry, yes, Nigeria yes. internet. Uh, where did I stop? <laughs> Experience assigning list uh, uh, value in a list. Yeah, so the assigning value in a list, you just call in the index and you give in the new value. So why we said uh, we don't use list, especially in deep learning is because of its inefficiency uh, with regards to uh, uh, input and output, and also uh, with regards to the chunk of memory it, uh, it, consume in, uh, it consumes. So what list usually are uh, uh, represented as if we look at this diagram is each uh, item in the list is represented as an, as an object, as an object that is independent of the other object. But in Tensor, what we do is we have a single frame and each of those uh, elements are stored in that frame. And whatever uh, your, your Tensor only points to them. So the tensor doesn't hold them, it just holds their addresses. So if you reassign, let's say you initial, initialize another tensor by, by, by another tensor, let's say you have tensor two is equal to tensor one. So when you change the value of tensor two, the value of tensor one also changes because what happened is it changes the value in the memory it, 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 uh, and, and, and the rest. So, but in a list, if you say, let's say list two is equal to list one, a new set of lists is created. So uh, changing the value in one list might not necessarily uh, affect the other. So to uh, declare a tensor, you import touch because we are using PyTorch, maybe in TensorFlow, it's, uh, it might be different. So if you import touch, this is the class that holds of uh, the tensors and uh, their operations, uh, touch, touch dot one three. So what you are seeing in here is you are creating a tensor of ones. As we will see, there are tensors of zeros. So you will see tensor dot zeros and you will give the dimension. In here is just one dimensional tensor, which is uh, three comma. So sometimes you call it three comma or sometimes you call it three comma one. So it's all the same. So you might have a multidimensional tensors as we'll see. So if let's say you say uh, tensors is equal to, uh, oh, sorry, A is equal to tensor dot ones, uh, three comma two. So it will be like three by two uh, uh, tensor. So if we look at our call up here, we import tensor, we assign tensor, uh, we assign it to A as tensor of ones and then we print the value of A, which is tensor of 1 point comma 1 point comma 1 point, which is a fancy way of writing 1.0 comma 2.0 comma 3.0.
So we'll enjoy tensor. So uh, as we saw a list to do indexing, what you need to do is you just call the index of the elements you how you want in in the in the tensor. So if we call uh, element uh, index one, what we'll have is one. And which one are we talking about? We are talking about the second one because uh, the first one is a zero, which is the first index. So if we want really the only the number because what returns is a tensor of one. If we want the number, we convert it to float. And we all know typecasting in, in object-oriented programming. Yeah. So if we convert it to float, we'll have 1.0, which is uh, the element in the index that we called. So uh, we can also reassign the, the value in at index two. So by just calling the index and giving the new value. So if we print the uh, tensor A, we will have 1, 1, 1, 2 which is the new value after the assignment. So also we said um, you can have tensors of zeros, but before going there, uh, let's see the essence of having tensor, which we've saw. Uh, we said uh, Python list of tuples are numbers collection that are individually allocated in the memory. So in, uh, in, in lists, you all the numbers 1.0, 2.2, 0.3 are just chunks of uh, are just objects uh, that uh, that 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 are located in some chunks of memory that are scattered in in the memory space. But in tensor, you have a single frame that contains your tensor, and in each of that, you just point towards the number that you want. So. So and each element they say is it at two bits, which is four byte float in. So uh, so each element one, two, three, and the rest is just four bytes. So uh, what maybe you will have in addition to this four bytes is the metadata. Usually metadata will explain what type of uh, tensor you have, uh, the data type, and uh, maybe the dimension, which is either two by two, three by three, four by four, or seven by six, and the rest. So now. Uh, we will see now how we uh, call tensor dot zeros. We saw tensor dot one, which is a tensor of ones. Here, tensor dot zero. First, what it will do is it will uh, create a tensor of size six, and it will assign zero at each uh, at each uh, assign the value of zero. So to do uh, to redo the assignment, we just call the index index one up to index five and we give our new values. But also you can do uh, the definition by uh, calling tensor, uh, touch dot tensor instead of touch dot zero and then reassign or touch dot one to do reassign. We can uh, like a shortcut, just do touch dot tensor and we give the, uh, the values of each index as a list. So are you yeah. with me? <clears throat> yeah, so. Um, let me just add a bit. So here, um, the first thing, uh, when we do the import touch, so touch is a module, right? It's not a class. So when you do import touch, touch is a module. And also, um, I just want to give an analogy with NumPy. So you see in NumPy, if you want to create a NumPy array, you use like np.array and you put your stuff you want to create, whether a list or something like that, right? So that means that array um, function is the one that create a NumPy array, right? But also in tensor, what you do, something related to that in comparison is tensor. So when you say like, um, uh, um, when you say touch the tensor, just the way we do NP in NumPy, NP.array to create uh, a NumPy array. So in PyTorch, we use touch the tensor and put whatsoever inside to create a touch, uh, tensor. But also inside, uh, as we have also in NumPy, when you have NP.array, you can have list, you can have a tuple, you can have list of list. So also in touch the tensor, you can have a list, you can have a tuple. Not only list are inside this function tensor, it can also contain a tuple. So yeah. So also if you remember in NumPy, we have NP.0, NP ones. all these are functions that um, built in function that allows you, a method I think, right, that allow you to create um, ready-made like, uh, you know, zero, fools, arrange, line space, run, run in, I, complex, all those stuff. So also in touch, we have this function, touch.once, just like np.once. 
touch dot zeros, just like uh, NP dot zero. So in a nutshell, what I'm saying is that um, uh, touch dot tensor is the same as NP dot array in NumPy. Um, touch dot zero is the same as NP dot zero. Uh, touch that once is the same as NP. So this is just the comparison I want to give. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so thank you, Doctor. I think uh, another thing, as we saw in Python, uh, you can have uh, import numP as NP. So uh, in here too, you can import touch as T so that you don't necessarily have to start writing touch every time. So you just say T dot tensor or T dot ones or T dot twos. So sometimes you even have to be like very, very careful on how you do your, your naming. Usually they use touch dot this. So NP also NP dot that because there is a method also that is T in, in touch we will see as transpose, shorthand for transpose. So uh, you might uh, say tensor or 10 or whatever you want and rest. So as a shorthand. Hello. Yes, Munaji, doctor, go on. Okay, so I thought my network stopped. Um, so uh, you have, so in here, I think we did uh, touch the zeros and then we do the assignment. So uh, if we print points here, let's do print points. I am writing on the collab. Um, home let's copy here and uh, after the initialization to let's print point so what we'll see in here you see we have first we have a tensor of zeros and then after the assignment we have a tensor of the new values that that you passed in so also i said we can just do touch the tensor and just pass pass the the, the points that you want so you have the same point as tensor the second tensor here, which is the same thing here. So this is just a short of, uh, form, which is just more Pythonic way of declaring a tensor than going through point by point and do the assignment. So if we see here, this is a one dimensional tensor. So we can have multidimensional tensors, which usually are given as a list of lists or tuple of tuples, <laughs> if that is a word in Python. So uh, what we have here is if we, uh, sorry, before going that, we can uh, get point 0.0 and point 0.1 as 4 and 1, which we know, uh, which we've already said how to do it. You just give uh, the, the, the index of the point you want, and then you type cast it to float. So it change its value to float. So, so afterwards, uh, multidimensional tensor, as we've said here, what you do is you have a list of lists in which each, each list Represent. I have a question, doctor. Uh, represent a row. Yes, sir. When we create this point inside, is it inside the tensor? Is it not float? Why do we float it again? Yes, it's float, but uh, tensor holds float values. Yes. But after you declare a tensor, it's a new data type called tensor. But inside that tensor, it's just like a list, oh, okay, okay, a okay. list of yeah, integers, yeah, yeah, I understand. a list of float. So here is a tensor, but the only type that it holds yeah, is yeah, so, yeah, float. Yeah. So, so yeah. if you yeah, so if you index it, maybe yeah, for if you index as point zero, what you get is tensor four. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I understand what you we, so we type cast them to become yeah, you type yeah, cast yeah. them if you want only the value, not a tensor four. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. Uh, so what we said here is multidimensional tensor in which each uh, each list represents a new row in the tensor. So and each element in that list represents a new column. Do you understand? So in here we have four comma one as one row, five comma three as uh, second row, two comma one as the third row. So if we want to, let's say, uh, index the first row, what we just put is tensor dot zero. So tensor dot zero will return four comma one. So if you really want the first value, which is four, you have to give uh, a multidimensional indexing, uh, indexing that match the dimension of the tensor. So since here we say it's two dimensional, so uh, you need a two dimensional indexing to get a particular value. So uh, tensor zero comma zero is 
is 4.0, which is tensor 4. If you typecast it to float, it will just become 4.0. Uh, tensor 0, 0,1 is 1.0. Tensor uh, 1, comma 0 is 5 points. So as we know in lists of lists or a matrix in, 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 in Python. Uh, so now here we can find its shape. Usually you have two methods of doing this. You can have point dot shape to find the shape of your tensor, or you can have point dot size, open bracket, close bracket. So uh, you, if you see point dot shape, shape is uh, like a, a it's like uh, if we talk about objects, we say objects have methods and attributes. So shape is an attribute of uh, the object tensor that will return the shape of your of your tensor. So also if you see point dot size open bracket close bracket, so it's a method that implements the same thing as as shape. So it will all return the size of your tensor. So in here we have a tensor uh, a tensor of size three by two. So you have three rows two columns. So that's what we mean. The first number represents the number of rows or the number of data points that you have in that tensor. And the second one represents the number of elements in each data point. So in here, the first data point is 4,1. So the number of elements in that data point is uh, four, uh, is two. So that means we have two. So we have three data points with each data point having, having two elements. So uh, if we have this in forms of the size of the tensor, we could also use zeros or ones to initiate that, uh, uh, providing the size as a tuple. So we can have touch dot zeros three comma two. As I explained uh, beforehand, we can have touch dot zeros three. So it will just have zero comma zero comma zero. So but if you say three comma two, it means you you are declaring a two dimensional tensor of size. 3,2. So in here you have 0, 0 as one uh, data point, 0, 0 as second, 0, 0 at the third as the third. So we do here to initialize uh, to initialize the same thing. Just touch the tensor and you give a list of lists to indicate multi-dimension. So also uh, something to point in here: what you have as data points in is, are required to have the same length. So you cannot have, let's say, 4, 0, 1.0, 0, 2.0, and the rest you have two dimensional. So that is not acceptable. So if you have two, you, you, you have to have the two, two, two as each uh, element in that. So, so as to, uh, sorry, so as to conform to the, to the expected uh, input. So after declaring this, if you print out points, you will see the, 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 the tensor that you've created. So if we run this, we've created a three by two tensor and with this data point. And if we click on its shape, this, it will give us a three comma two. So also let's see, let's add a code here and say points dot size. So point dot size two is expected to give us the same thing. So you'll see touch the size is three comma two. So also here is three comma two. So these two uh, commands will give you the size of your tensor. So as we looked here, here if you have let's say touch dot uh, zeros three comma two, it will create a three by two arrays of zeros. So in here too, if you do this, it's just the same thing as what you did uh, there. So to do the indexing, as I said, if you have two dimensional, you have to give two dimensions to get a particular point. So here we are trying to find zero comma one. So the zero indicates the first row and one indicates the second column. So our expected uh, output will be one. So, and if you want to have it as, as just 1.0, you typecast it to float. So, and if you give only one dimensional uh, indexing, what you have is the complete row, which is four comma one. So you will not have a specific element, you have a specific row. Yeah, so one thing that maybe people will remember is that a list, like for example, in Python, when you are using list, if you have list of list, and when you want to access one concatenate, I mean, something that is inside, um, 
what you do is like uh, you put the name of the list and uh, do like a, a square bracket concatenated together. But this one, you have only a single square bracket and you put the axis you want to access. Yeah. So uh, if you see, I skipped some of the coding here because uh, uh, we, we need to cover indexing before going back to storage and they mixed the code here, there. So what we have here is the indexing. So indexing as a list. So you can have uh, uh, index one to four, or you can have everything in the, in the, I think this annotate, I think will give us drawing code. Make a character. Yes, so I was trying to, get a marker now okay so what we have here is after seeing let's say some list is equal to list range six what we mean here is range from 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 zero to five so if you have this and you want uh, the list to uh you convert it to a list sorry and here we are seeing indexing in lists which uh translate to almost the same indexing in tensor except for for multidimensional uh for multidimensional uh, uh tensors which will see the difference so if you uh create a list of range zero to five which is what we mean by range six so if you give uh some list uh, uh dot dot this will uh, return everything in the list just as saying some list i'm printing some list so it will return everything so the indexing of uh, column inside will return everything. So if you have list of uh, of one to four, uh, it will return one to three, meaning it will start from one and it will finish at at three, meaning one is inclusive and four is exclusive. So if you have one to one dot dot and you didn't specify the second argument, you, it means it starts from one up to the end. If you didn't give, if you don't give the first argument, you just say column four. It means it starts from the first and it stops at three, because four is the last and is exclusive. So it will start from index zero up to index three. So uh, if you give dot dot uh, minus one, so what this will start from? It will start from the first and it will end before the last. Meaning uh, minus one but it's exclusive, so it won't give you, so it will start from one up to N minus one. Uh, sorry, N minus two, because N minus one is the last, last list, so zero to N minus two. So if you give a one, a column four, column two, it means it start from the first, it stops at the third, but it will be skipping two, 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 two. So this is what this means. So if we uh, go to our tensor, what we have is if you give one dot dot also what it does is it will return the first row all the rows after the first one so uh that's why i said to do uh indexing in tensor if you have multi-dimensional tensor you have to give multi-dimensional index indexing so if you see in the second point here what we have here is uh we have our row one dot dot meaning it should start from the first row until the last row, comma, then you are given, the, you are specifying the value for the column, the index, sorry, for the column, meaning all of the columns. That's why you give just dot dots, as you see uh, in the list here. So what we do here is, uh, what we uh, get returned here is uh, uh, the first row until the last row, returning all the columns. But here, the third one here, it gives the first row until the last row, but we are considering only the first column, which is column at index zero. So that means it will give you, uh, let's say we have well, uh, here examples. If we look at the Google Colab, we'll see array. Let's take array as tensors. So we have one, 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 and one, 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 two, and the rest. So if we call uh, point one dot zero comma, uh, sorry, one column comma zero, what we'll have is this second one, this second one, uh, second uh, row. So it will start from this 
and it will give us only this column because you specify only column zero. So your output will just be one comma, one point, then one point. So you have only the first column with uh, discarding all of the other values in it. So if you have print point dot none, so this none, what it does, it adds one dimension to, to, to your array. So if you have, let's say, array, uh, sorry, tensor of, let's say, three comma two, if you print, uh, uh, assign this point none, it will give uh, point, uh, sorry, your tensor will become three comma two comma one. Although that three comma two comma one, as I said in 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 tensor, you you might not necessarily have to mention that one. So if you print its size here, you will have three comma two. If you are talking about uh, our 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 point tensor, so since our normal size, uh, our original size is three comma two. If we see it here, this is three comma two. So if you uh, uh, print points not, uh, none, your size will be the same, but if you print the particular tensor, you'll see that the dimension has been increased by one. So I think now let's do, so clear, clear all drawings, and remove canvas. Yeah, so, now our tensor point is uh, 4.40103 by two. So if we do this, the problem here is it will print only the last one, but let's, let's iterate through them. Let's comment this, comment this. So now let's print this. So now some list is a list of range zero to five. So if you give, uh, dot dot we see it will give uh, it will return all the all the elements in the list. So if we comment this out and print just from index one to index three, what we'll have is zero to two. Uh, sorry, one to three because we start from index one and we are stopping at index three. So yeah, I said zero because uh, zero is in at index zero, but we are not considering index zero. So if we comment this out and give this, what we'll have is a list of from the first element, which is one, because we say the zero element is usually the first element, uh, literally. So we have one to five, which is to the last element in the, in the list. So I think the rest is self-explanatory. We go on. So if we have our tensor now, tensor of points, if we comment, comment this, comment this. So what we'll have here, we said, is a tensor, but here, wait, sorry, let's print this please and compare. Oh, before doing this, let's print points. I want us to compare the output with the last, last output. So if we comment this out, so what we'll have are, the first one you see, we have our normal tensor, which is 4 comma 1, 5 comma 3, and 2 comma 1. So if we uh, uh, specify the indexing, we said we need only the second row and all of the columns. So you see we have 5 comma 3 and 2 comma 1. If we comment this out, sorry, I hope, are you with me, please? Amen, Ajinka. Uh -huh. So if you comment this out, what you have is the first row to the last row, but only the first column. So what you have here, you see, you have uh, 4, 1, 5, 3, 2, as your original tensor. But we, are, we said only the first row to the last row, but only the first column. So you see, our first column is just 5, 2. Yeah, there is a question. Um... Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Umar, can you ask your question? Okay. Hello, I... Nam? Hello. Yeah, yes. Umar. Hello. Umar. Yeah, I have a question. In a yeah, well, maybe. So I wanted to ask is that a standard mathematical formula for converting an uh, image to tensor? Image, come on. I we are not there yet. Ah, uh, what's what's the question? Can you come again? 
Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Is that a standard, a standard conversion, a standard mathematical formula converting from anything like image text to tensor? Like yeah, it's general a general like, mathematical formula. Yeah, I think maybe I will give a brief, brief um, opinion here. Maybe Dr. Shams, if you want to add. So our uh, pictures, as we see them, if we do computer graphics, are just numbers. So what you just uh, I uh, fluctuate is the value of pixel at each index. So maybe uh, zero comma uh, yeah. Usually you use RGB, and the, the the higher at a particular pixel, the higher the value of your R O G O B determines the particular color that will be printed in there. So also to convert them, you just convert the RGB back into their numbers. Yeah, I mean, does it um, make sense? I mean. So, uh, um, Umar, are you talking about uh, exactly what he is presenting or something different, like you are talking about how image are represented as tensor or related to this, what he's doing? Yeah, no, you know, uh, basically with a machine learning model, there are general mathematical uh, equation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm looking at uh, from N conversion, let's just have to convert this uh, spectrogram which is kind of uh, like an image. Then from there, you just have to convert it to tell So I'm wondering if there's ah, a general okay, okay. mathematical Yeah, so, so, so um, actually the next chapter of this book discuss those stops in detail, how you can actually convert oh. image to tensor. So okay. this chapter, what this chapter is doing is basically telling you what is even a tensor. But the next chapter, oh, okay. the okay. next chapter, what it says, chapter four, real world yes. data representation using tensor so if you go okay. to okay. chapter uh, yeah in chapter uh, in that chapter we have 4.2 it said three yes. image uh, 4.1 working with image it will tell you what kind what are the channels what are image file how you can convert it to tensor how you do normalization how you even do like um uh, representing of 3d image tensor so uh, and we discuss tabular data, time series, and how you can represent text. But at this chapter, okay, perfect. Is, yeah, this chapter, what is doing? Uh, just telling you what is tensor. What can you do with okay. tensor? Can you do? Yes, okay. that is basically yeah. So maybe we can see this uh, next in the next chapter. Okay, then perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm um, at. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Okay. So basically, what you are doing here is um, so this is the same as um, um, Python stuff, list, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, just uh, some addition with yeah, but you can go on. Okay, I a minute. Can you answer it? Come on, Shiba, can you answer Baba? I don't have a daddy. Mu as a mum special ni. Atu mu kuma pa mu da miki. Ni karfe 9 saura muke shan ruwa. Ah bonus ne wallan. Ni ku ba ku zufa. Ku kwana za ya dadi. Um so we have I think we saw that. So I think the last part is after printing this point we'll see uh if we see this was uh a what I was I might say Yes, so we only uh, consider only the first column of the second row to the third row. So if we see this, let's say we have, uh, we consider all of the rows, but only the first column, we'll see we have three numbers, which are four, five, and two, which returns our first column. Uh, so if we re return one, it will return our second column. So, uh, I, uh, you, sorry, I, 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 I have not been asking if there are questions. I was just going to share, share. So, if there are questions, please let me know. Um. So the last point here that yeah, the I'll, question is this: What is yes. the difference between tensor and variable? Um, are you asking, Ravi? Are you asking about variable from TensorFlow or what? Or normal variable in Python? Normal variable in Python. Ah, I think normal variable we might not necessarily see Python. Let's let's take it as let's say 
normal variable in object oriented programming. So normal variable, as we know, is just a container for storing, storing values. So here, as we said, point, where do, I, do we say? Yeah, here point is equal to touch dot once. So this point is a variable of type tensor because the data that you are storing in it is a tensor. So the, the, the container is the variable while the value you are storing defines the type. Usually in Python, you don't specify type as in let's say Java, you have to declare what type uh, of variable you are declaring before storing the value. But in here, the value that you store, the type of value, uh, value determines the, the, the type of variable. So also as you are going through, you can be changing the value variable as you want. Not, uh, not necessarily always assigning the same type of data. So I don't know whether this makes sense. Or Dr. Shamsu, do you want to add anything else? Yeah, my question first was like, uh, I don't know previously whether he's coming from TensorFlow. Um, so in TensorFlow, a, a variable looks like an act like a tensor. And uh, it is in fact a data structure backed by uh, tensor, uh, tensor. So um, yeah, but I think he's not coming from TensorFlow. So um, um, uh, basically uh, your explanation makes sense, but um, uh, if he's coming from TensorFlow, I can share something here. You can look at, there is something variable in TensorFlow. Just yeah. like, so, but this variable is not the variable you know in Py, in programming. For example, yeah. in programming, you just say A equals to X plus B, right? A yeah. is a variable. That is a general programming. What's so, yeah, general program. But this variable in TensorFlow is different from that. So since you are not coming from, you are not asking from TensorFlow, so the explanation it did make uh, is the better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe if we, if you want more information, as Doctor said, he will share something you read. And maybe if we finish this book and we are going into TensorFlow, maybe uh, we'll come and make uh, more points on that. So, uh, but I know, I think Raibu is not asking about TensorFlow. I know if I may see. So in here, I just want us to compare the first. Uh, but uh, I'm not hearing what you are saying, please. Can you, speak, can you repeat what you have said before, please? Are you hearing me now, please? Yes, I am hearing you. Yeah, so I said, uh, is it the part of explaining variable or the part of saying what you are asking? Hello. Hello, Rabi. Hello. Nam. Yeah, so variable, Hello? as we said, is. So, but I know this is what you are asking, not TensorFlow, because I don't yes. know, think whether you, you are familiar with TensorFlow yet. So, but. I'm not familiar with it. All. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Shamsu have explained what variable means in TensorFlow as an added uh, explanation. So if you see in here, what we have is this tensor, uh, three by two tensor, and we have an additional bracket in the second tensor. So this means it added one dimension to our tensor. Although if you print, let's say, point the shape here, point the shape, and uh, let's say point none the shape, what you will have are the same thing. So the, it added one, my mistake, but I thought it wouldn't add any this thing, but it added one as, as, uh, as this thing, as, as a one dimension. So the first one is just three by two. And the second one, if you see it's uh, one by three by two. So usually the one, sometimes you forget. Um, I don't know what this known because I'm not using it. Um, so now we, we can see the shape has changed, right? It, this, yes. this, this, so why do we, I mean, maybe we can see later, but yeah, it just, what does it say? Add a dimension of size on, just like it wants. Okay, it just yeah, adds so dimension. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they said uh, there is something called broadcasting, which we'll see, I think, in subsequent chapters. Yeah. So to do broadcasting is just like uh, point wise multiplication. So yeah. you must have your dimension to be the same. Yeah, just uh, like one size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, you must have compatible dimensions. Not necessarily that they must be the same, but they have to be compatible. I think if we do uh, linear algebra, if we do uh, not number theory, that's caused by Fege, I, I've forgotten. Yeah, that's so linear do, algebra. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, linear algebra. I think there was two courses that we were taking at the same time. So compatible matrix for you to do um, whether multiplication, they 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 must yeah, be compatible. So you have you must have compatible matrix. Yes. So yeah, yeah. So we let's move on. Um, we so, anytime here. Uh, so now here we are seeing the same name tensors, which I have not read much on it, but it's uh, it's just almost the same thing here. As you see, there is something called on squeeze, there is squeeze, there is broadcasting, there is which the set will go into them uh, in subsequent chapters. There is also mean, which will also go into uh, the, uh, the random, which random you will know, uh, just generation of random numbers of this size, but will go uh, uh, deep into them in subsequent chapters. So because this get messy quickly, as you see in the first uh, here, so we, we just keep this and we see it in subsequent chapters. So name tensors, all of this mean, all of this, uh, uh, you see there is something called image dot refine names, refine shape, this and that. So these are all advanced uh, tensor flow, which we are given just as examples and we'll see them uh, afterwards. So uh, there are types of elements in tensor. So, we have numbers in Python's and we set numbers, they are objects. So uh, whereas a floating point number might require only for instance, that two bits to be presented in a computer, Python will convert it into a full-fledged Python object with reference counting and so on. This operation is called boxing. It is not a problem if we are storing small number uh, numbers, but if you are allocating millions, it gets very, inefficient, which usually in deep learning, you allocate billions sometimes, not even millions. So uh, lists in Python's are meant for sequential uh, collection of objects. So there are no operations defined for say, efficiently taking the dot product of this or summing vectors together. So also lists uh, have no way of optimizing the layout of their contents in memory, which we have seen already in the first part. So the Python interpreter is slow compared to the optimized compiled code. So usually you need a library that will implement, uh, let's say a low level language such as C because C is by far faster than all this high level programming. So what uh, Tensor uh, PyTorch does is it uh, implement a list as tensors or this as that, but the underlying architecture behind all of those is, uh, is, is C. So it just implement all of this as just uh, a, an API uh, that are uh, implemented in, in low level uh, language to make everything faster and to, to be able to uh, manipulate the memory to be able, so you all know able to manipulate memory, able to influence speed and everything you need uh, low level programming. So what TensorFlow does is uh, try to uh, simplify the, uh, the leveling in the programming to implement almost everything in C and then give you the API to call it as a high level programming such as Python. So Dr. Shamsu, do you have anything to add here or can we continue? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so um, why do we need like NumPy? So naturally Python is slow, it's slow language, right? So, uh, and the reason behind it that um, you see, um, in Python, you just, you just, for example, you say A equals to two, or like, for example, C plus plus or something like that. You just say um, int A equals to three. It means you specify the type, right? Int A equals to three. At the beginning, you need to specify the type of a variable. But in Python, you just say A equals to two. You didn't say that. So what happens? So what happens is that at the background, there is this kind of conversion. So Python, there is implementation that will check what kind of type and now do the type um, type assignment. And there is a code behind that do all those stuff. Even though you as the program, you don't see that. Just assume that this is simple, but at the back end, this kind of conversion is done. That is why Python is so slow that it does it need to do this kind of overhead. So um, to do such kind of mathematical computations, which require large million of numbers at such a kind of operation, we need a way to optimize, to do some kind of performance stuff. That's where NumPy comes. So NumPy comes in such a way that it implement those stuff like um, in, in C. So for example, here in NumPy, in Python, you have sum, which is a function sum that do summation of numbers. You have uh, addition, but sum in NumPy is faster than sum in 
uh, uh, Python. They, they are the same function, but it's faster. So uh, NumPy comes and implement all those stuff in C, uh, where it um, it doesn't need to do that kind of, that such kind of overhead. So that's why it's faster. So also here now um, uh, we have the uh, tensor, which also implement uh, the same thing, but uh, uh, goes to extra mile as n-dimensional uh, matrix. Yeah. So that's what I want to. Say there is go on there. There is. In the coding, what they give us next is converting uh, to and from uh, 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 NumPy to touch and touch to NumPy, which I think we'll see next. So if you have touch of ones, three by four dimensional of ones, so uh, uh, you can convert it into a NumPy by just saying dot NumPy, or you can, or you can say to, uh, I think there is a method called to, where is it, where is it, where is it? Because what they did was the, everything here is, is scattered around. But yeah, you, you can convert it to NumPy by just saying that to NumPy. So, and if you uh, print it, you will see it's just a NumPy array of type float 32. So if we look at here, the data type in, in, in PyTorch, there are many data types which you usually you like to declare if you really want to, or if you really have to. So there are uh, data that will have, let's say, uh, by default, it's just 32 bit. Whenever you declare Py, uh, PyTorch uh, tensor, is a 32 bit floating point, but you can specify uh, the the data type that you want, maybe due to requirement or the rest. So there are all other as uh, float sixty four, float sixteen. There is int eight on int. So and you see all most almost all of this. You you just say touch dot touch dot. So you just call the touch class and you call uh, the 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 attribute or the function. So and touch dot in sixteen is just touch the short touch int touch long. So by default it's just touch. Uh, 16, the touch is uh, touch 32 bit floating point, sorry. So uh, we say computation happening in neural networks are typically executed in 32 bit floating point. So maybe if you go into executing tasks in uh, deep learning, sometimes you see that you can increase or decrease precision to either fasten your execution or, uh, or uh, uh, or enhance accuracy in some in some form in some form, or sometimes you fasten it with, uh, by 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 uh, sacrificing a bit of accuracy. So because we know uh, deep learning usually is uh, is a very complicated process that sometimes will take uh, days or even months training. So by increasing or decreasing the precision, you can uh, fasten uh, or make it faster. So uh, uh, by default, it's just 32 bit floating point precision. You can make it 8 bit precision. You can make it 16 bit. If you like, you can try making it 64 bit. Maybe if you take one month, it might take six months to do the training and the rest. So um, having, as we said here, the second point is if you want to have the precision, we said that I normally it's 32 bit, but if you want to make it 16 bit to make it faster, uh, it's not uh, possible on standard CPUs that we have, but you uh, that's where you, you you need GPUs and the rest. So we'll see that too. So the, we say tensors can be used as index uh, in other tensors. In this case, Python expects index to have a 64-bit integer type so that if you are indexing, maybe you can index 32-bit. So if you are uh, using a large uh, tensor, you can index a lower uh, precision uh, tensor, but you cannot index uh, 64 bit from a 32 bit uh, tensor. So, why do we need um, 32 bit floating point in deep learning? 32 bit is the default. So, uh, because uh, is the default and is uh, is is present in CPUs, our standard CPUs. But but maybe there are other points that you may. At maybe that's why you asked the question. So do you have any other reason? Um, yeah, so um, yeah, so um, that two bit floating point has been used uh, like to give optimal accuracy performance. 
but also you can use uh, system bit. Uh, but at some point, um, there's a study that shows that um, because that two bit, it means you allocate more memory, right? Um, size. What about system bit? It means um, you allocate less memory. With using system bit uh, means has precision. It means uh, you can train faster uh, than touch two bit, um, and you do not waste space. So what is happening now? There is what is called mixed precision. So mixed precision now allows you to basically do um, a situation whereby uh, uh, um, whereby touch two bit precision uh, will be better, then it will use touch two bit precision. A situation whereby uh, system bit precision will be better, it will use system bit precision. So um, yeah, there is uh, this idea of mixed precision and now it has been used in a lot of stuff and it does not actually compromise the accuracy using uh, mixed precision, yeah. So you should know that uh, there is mixed precision because yeah, they didn't talk about what is mixed precision, they just talk about these uh, 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 have precision and stuff like that, yeah. So, so yeah, so the data type, if you, you, if you are declaring or you are defining a tensor, you can include the data type if you don't want the default. So as we said, if you have tensor uh, is equal to, let's say, uh, uh, touch dot once 10 comma two. So by default, if you uh, print the data type, you will get touch dot, uh, touch dot, uh, uh, sorry, touch dot float 32. Yeah, or touch dot float, whichever one you have. Um, so if you require, let's say in 16, or you require uh, float 64 and the rest, you just uh, specify as part of the argument, data type is equal to touch dot double or touch dot short or touch dot int or touch dot whatever you want. Um, so, and to get the data type, uh, the data type of that instance, you just uh, uh, use dot D type, uh, which is just a shorthand for data type. So also you can do conversion. You can convert from touch 64 to touch dot short because uh, uh, they said, if we want, uh, let's say, a two-bit computation, we need to make sure all of our input are at most touch two bit. So you cannot up, up uh, they said half, half uh, precision, but maybe you cannot double precision. So you cannot say you are using a touch two bit precision floating point uh, tensor, and then you are uh, doing calculation in 64 bit. So but you can use 64 bit and do calculation in touch two bit by having the precision. So at least if you are working and you uh, maybe you want 16 bit precision, so you can have precision, it will convert it from touch two bit to one. Uh, so in, um, um, I audible, my internet is not stable. I am gonna drink, I'm gonna drink connector, chigaba, chigaba, I think I can kill. Okay. So uh, the tensor bit API have uh, uh, it's just like an interface. Oh, they say they case. When are the fifteen? When are the around fifteen minutes? So you can you need to fast. When are the? Okay, minutes? I think we don't have much to cover now. So we are just. Uh, in this, you we have different functions. Like if we say uh, in in linear algebra, we have the transpose which this allows you to do transpose so you're just taking the rows as columns taking the column your size you can do tensor dot one you can find the shape you can find the size which we've also saw uh, before so there are many operations creation operation indexing slicing and the rest which some of it will see in subsequent chapters so there is something also which is uh, very important that we call storage. There is something we call stride, and there is something we call size. We saw size, so now what is storage? So basically, storage gives you the elements that have been stored in a particular tensor. So if you declare, let's say, point is equal to tensor, uh, touch the tensor, and you give. So if you print the storage. So in the storage, it will give you the, 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 the individual uh, elements that have been stored in that particular 
in that particular. Also, there is something we call stride. So this stride is uh, is a, is an attribute or a function that tells you how to reconstruct this storage. So for now, here we have tensor is equal to uh, touch uh, point. Sorry, is equal to touch the tensor four comma one as uh, rows. So four comma one as first row, five comma three. But if we print storage, we have just four one five three. So this can be one by one by six. It can be two by three. It can be three by two. You don't know. So this thread determines who, uh, what type of uh, dimension you have. So if is please please. Yeah, so what stride does is it tells you how many moves. If we look at this stride, it's equal to three comma one. The first one indicate how many moves until you go to the second row. The next one tells you how many moves until you go to the next column. Do you understand? So if you have, let's say five uh, by uh, three by three uh, array, sorry, three by three tensor, sorry, I'm mixing this thing up. Three by three tensor, so you have to go one, two, three, before you go to the next row. So this tells you even if in your storage, you just have five, seven, four, one, two, three, and the rest. So with this stride information, it, you know that you have five, seven, four as the first row, because you have to go uh, from here, you have one, two, three. This three, it means is the starting point of the next row. So it gives you the, the value in the stride the value for the row and then for the next column you just have to do one shift so you do from five to seven just one shift to go to the next column so this is what strides means so if you see stride you see uh uh you see the the basic form in which data is, is taught in in the storage if you have the stride information you can reconstruct the tensor this is how uh uh pytorch does uh, storage and the reconstruction of the of tensor in the memory. So also there is the offset. Offset is the uh, amount of shifts that you will do to go to the first element. So in here you see the first element is five, but in our memory we have a, a metadata six. So to set the value of offset as one, it means our we have to go one shift to find our first element in in our in our tensor. So the first one is a metadata, which we'll see what it means in subsequent uh, 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 presentations. So there is also a very uh, fine formula here that uh, you can implement given storage and given stride to, to find uh, the particular element in, 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 a, uh, in a given storage or a given index. So if you are uh, you want to find an element in at index i comma j, what you need to do is you take the first stride, which is in that uh, formula three. The second uh, value in the stride is one. So the first one multiply the first uh, index. The second one multiply the second index. If you have let's say three dimensional, the third uh, dimension multiply the third dimension in the in the in the stride. So the number of uh, dimension in stride is must be the same as the uh, dimension in your tensor so if you do that and you add the offset let's say usually you used to have zero offset meaning the first element in that storage is just the first element in the tensor but if in any case you have uh, uh, an offset if you add to that offset the output you have is just that element in that particular index that you want so with uh, with the storage information, with the stride information, and with the indexing information, you can go directly to the storage and just get your value. So what what is this stride zero and stride one? Why do we stride zero so, and stride so one? So as we said, stride is a is a tuple. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if the stride zero indicates uh yeah, indicates the, the the row and stride ah, one is the yes, column. Yes. 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 So, and if you have multi-dimension, let's say you have three comma one, let's say comma two, meaning you have to go uh, uh, three uh, to go to the next row, one to go to the next column, and maybe two to go to the next frame. Let's talk in this. So let's say we have multi-frame uh, tensor, 
multi-frame matrix, which is just multidimensional tensor. So you might have three comma one comma let's say one or three comma one uh, comma two comma one in 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 that nature. So lastly, uh, we have the cloning. So what what I said is, if you say let's say point is equal to touch the tensor and you give you define your tensor. So if you say second point is equal to point at index one, it means second point five comma three will be saved as second point. If you change any value in this five comma three, which is second point, if you change any value, the value of point will also change. Because as I said, what this variable does, a tensor does is, it will just point to the storage. So pointing to the storage, if you save uh, point one in uh, second point, it means second point is now pointing at five comma three. So if you change uh, the first index, uh, uh, which is five, and you set the new value as 10, it means even if you print out this tensor, you will get 10 instead of getting five. Because this second point point to that, uh, to that, uh, to that storage, uh, to that cell in that storage, and uh, you you change the value in that cell. So if you if you want to, uh, uh, if you want to make you copy to change the value, you can clone. So clone it means it is cre creating a new set of value. So by by saying point one dot clone, it means it is cre it is creating a new tensor at a different uh, storage location. So if you change the value in that clone, it won't affect the value in points. So I hope this is also self-explanatory. Yeah. So this is the same as NumPy. NumPy. So if you do like this, it's called what you call a view in Python. So it's called view. It's not a real copy. So that's what we have in, uh, in NumPy as well. So um, uh, also in Python, that is what is called copy and um, deep copy. If you remember in Python, that is what is called deep copy and copy. So yeah, so copy will copy that. And yeah, that they are basically comparison with them. Yeah. Let's move. So now during transpose, so what transpose we said does is it uh, shuffles. So if you have, let's say three by two here, if you do transpose, you are left with two by three. So also you will have your stride changing, but this brings what we call about the contiguous or not contiguous. So let's assume we have, uh, I need to write here or do something. Let me see if they have tensor dot here and we do transpose, yes, and we do contiguous. So there's the implementation here. So if you have points, Let's print points. So now let's print points. So we have points as three by two array. So if we do the transpose, we said uh, T is just a short, uh, a short form of doing transpose. So you can just say transpose the transpose or the T and, and it will do transpose for you. So it would convert it to three by two uh, three by two dimensional. But if we see our transpose here, what we have as our new uh, row is four, five, two, and the second row is one, three, one. But if you print the same storage, let's print. Let's print points and it's storage here. So you see this two. We have four, one, five, three, two, one, which is the same thing as four, one, five, three, two, one. So you have after even after transposing, you have the same storage in the memory. So, but if you print the stride. Let's print the stride of point and the stride of the transpose.
you see your stride have changed. By changing this stride, it means in the first instance, you have to do two shifts to go to the next row because our dimension, I think, is three by two. So you have to skip the first uh, element, second element, then you go to the next row, which, uh, yeah, here, you go four, one, then you go to the second row, which is five, three. So this is the first stride. So the second stride, after transpose, it means, where is our transpose? Yeah, we have four, five, two, and one, three, one. It means to go to the second row, you have to do only one shift. And it means you, after shifting, you go, uh, where is our storage? Yeah, yeah, our storage. It means after one shift, you go four, uh, one. That means this one belongs to the second row. But to go to the second column, you have to go four, one. Then five is the start of your second column. So this sometimes is confusing because your stride information changes and the rest. So if you really want to do transpose, you have to convert it to contiguous. What it means by contiguous is it's uh, reset your stride to, uh, to match your, your present uh, uh, tensor, uh, tensor shape. So in here, our tensor shape is three by two. Sorry, two by three, sorry. So two by three, after you run the contiguous and uh, you see you have this, and if you print your stride now, it's still three comma one, meaning you have to go uh, one, two, three to go to the second to the second row. But if you do not do contiguous, it will be one comma three, meaning you, you after doing one, shift you go to the second so it's just like some kind of uh confusing yeah but, but why do we here, need then to come back here, go here, come back here. what why do you need to make the transpose contiguous why in i mean what what, what does it have effect like and so um, what we said with regards to storage and stride is if you save something in your memory in your storage with the value of stride and the value of your storage the uh, uh, tensor can reconstruct your your oh your, yeah yeah I get you got the tensor. you yeah so I if get you, you do not make it contiguous okay what it means is now. in the memory is just saying that yeah still now is three by two even though you did transpose so your stride will just uh, uh will will just change to indicate that uh, instead of saying here you are at four. Then you go to one, meaning you have changed column. But if you make uh, two moves, you have changed row. It will tell you that if you make one move, you have changed row. Even though what you are seeing here is what you did now, you just change column. If you are seeing my, are you uh, are you seeing my uh, mouse pointer? Yeah, 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 yeah. So here, what you did, you just change column. You change column, but it will be telling you that after four here, if you do one here, you are on a different row. But what you are seeing is you are on a different column because you did transpose. So by yeah, doing so, it means that it redefines the stride, meaning you uh, by doing one uh, one move, you are on the same uh, data entry. Uh, you doing second, you are on the same data entry, but doing the next shift, you are on a different data entry. So it means the data are, are placed side by side to each other. So I think this is the last part. The, the old, other part is- Moving to GPU, if you can go over- GPU, to... yeah, saving at GPU. So yeah. what it does is there are calculations that we said, where is this? Yeah, moving tensor to GPU. So GPU, uh, what we've been doing here, we have been doing calculation and storing inside the memory. So, but to do GPU computation, you have to shift your data into the GPU. So to do that, what you just say is to CUDA. And uh, I think we have it. No, sorry, I think we have it in our second. Where is this? Yeah, so this is this. So these are storage, uh, which uh, you can store it to a file and then read it. 
because sometimes you want to uh, clear your memory. So you can just uh, store uh, the values of the tensor to a file and then you can read it. And there are two types of storage. You can store it uh, using the HP uh, H5Pi and you can just store it using uh, the method uh, touch.load. But the touch.load, it uses pickle and pickle can only be read by the touch. But sometimes you can you want to store it in a form that another application can, can read it. So you use the H5 uh, Pi, uh, which is the HD, HDF5, uh, uh, what, uh, this thing, uh, file, file type. Sorry, I'm making it this fast. So now if you want to save your tensor to GPU, you specify the device. The device is just CUDA. CUDA means a, uh, a, a GPU that supports CUDA and CUDA enables uh, uh, running the planning because not all GPU supports uh, to do the planning on GPU, you need specific uh, versions of uh, GPU that supports CUDA. So uh, to to store uh, tensor to uh, to CUDA, you just indicate the device that you want to store it on. So also you can you can save a uh, or already declared tensor, which is the point. Yeah, or you can see points dot CUDA and it just save instead of saying point dot two and then you specify device you just shorthand just say points dot CUDA and this uh, argument specify which of uh, the the GPU you want to save because sometimes you can have uh, multiple GPUs so you just specify the ID usually zero in the case the first GPU or only if you have only one GPU it have the ID as zero so you specify if you have multiple you want so to do the computation what this does yeah after saving after saving after saving to do computation this does computation on 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 gpu so this uh, so to now to you can then convert it back into or you can load it back into cpu by saying to cpu after doing computation or or or, or even before computation if you save it in gpu and you want to do computation on cpu you can uh uh, uh save it back here so uh doing transpose so you see this thing i mixed so i think summarily this should be the end of the presentation yeah numpy uh interoperability you see you can convert it to numpy you can convert it back to 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 tensor and to do conversion to numpy you just see tensor dot numpy and it you just convert it to numpy if you want to convert it back you just see uh, uh, touch dot from NumPy, meaning the data you are given is NumPy, so you are converting from NumPy into into a tensor. So, serializing tensors, meaning saving them into memory, you can do it with pickle, which is just touch dot save, or you can do it using the HD uh, H5 Pi. So now we have covered everything we need to get started with the presenter, although it's uh, somewhat sometimes a bit uh, hasty, but I will require, I will encourage, I can't say require because this I think is just helping oneself. You can, I can encourage you to read uh, through the book. It's very easy to read and you can uh, uh, host your, your notebook on Jupyter notebook or even Spider. You can host it there and uh, run the examples to see how this works. And you can find other documentations online. You can see, uh, sometimes the easier way to even read some of this is to watch a video such as this. We will have said everybody should go and read it by himself, but by by explaining and running the code and maybe uh, will uh, and asking questions and interacting and the rest will know better than reading. So sometimes you can watch a video on YouTube especially with cheap data nowadays, you can watch a video on YouTube to get uh, the background on this, because if we go into deep into it, all of this basic knowledge will uh, become very, very much important. So, so Dr. Shamsu, this is the end of my presentation. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much, Idris. And um, I, I must say that this chapter, which is basically Tensa, is the backbone of uh, before you start doing deep learning. What I mean by backbone is like, uh, if you want to do deep learning with PyTorch, you must know how to uh, change something to GPU, change something to 
CPU, you know, how to combat your image or text to tensor. So as you can see here, as Diri said that uh, we just um, go through, um, but the main important thing is for you to go into the chapter, uh, um, trying to practice and you can ask your question in our Slack group. Uh, we are there, we can ask questions. So me too, I, I, um, I will practice this chapter and I will ask questions and I will also post my summary because I, uh, what I do, I, when I read, I write some summary. So I will post my summary about the chapter in the Slack group. And please do ask question if you have, yeah. So um, next week. One, one important point to add here is, so when we did our, mostly of our experiment and the rest, what we do is we use uh, already implemented frameworks. So such as let's say OpenNMT, they have uh, frameworks in, in recurrent neural networks, in convolutional neural networks, in, in transformer. We have uh, the Joy NMT, we have, uh the uh, we have them so but the problem is what you don't know is you don't know the 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 the, the what, what should i call it you don't know really what goes in in that implementation and all of those implementation usually are derived from papers that have been uh written by some other people so if you want to come up with your own architecture if you don't know all of this background and you don't know pytorch you will just be looking at the coding and you don't know what it means. So sometimes you want to, let's say like change, uh, change something that has not been implemented in a code or you bring out a new implementation of let's say RNN or new implementation of transformer. So if you don't know PyTorch or you don't know TensorFlow, you cannot implement them. So you just have to just go uh, and use what has already been implemented without getting access to the, the the, the real, uh, uh, you, you call it foundation, or the real building blocks of that frameworks. So that's the essence of learning yeah, by so, touch so yeah, that you can so, implement your own code, you can implement your own algorithm and the rest. Yeah, so I, I, I could remember, if you remember, we were running uh, a code for uh, name entity recognition and David forgot like he was using his own um, GPU so he put the number of GPU that correspond his uh, GPU. And uh, I was running from my own, like uh, I didn't change the number of uh, GPU. So also other people didn't change. So if nobody knows Python, so you will just be moving ahead. And, you know, so yeah, that is an issue with that. So I think we are on top of time. Uh, we even add a lot of time. So uh, I think we can close the session today and we see you um, next week. I think tomorrow we don't have session because uh, we'll have our house NLP and next week, uh, we will have two sessions. Next week, we have uh, chapter four, which discuss about the representation of these centers in different, and we will have chapter five, which I would present. And the chapter five will be uh, an issue of um, uh, uh, make the mechanic of learning. So the mechanic, how deep learning works. So you can see here, we just look at the some of the background, but the mechanics, like how deep learning works, how it is working. So we will see that in chapter five, which will be in next week, Sunday. So I think, uh, yeah, um, any question before we go on? Any question? Okay, I think there is no question, maybe. But we'll see you next week. Bye-bye, ciao, ciao. So thank you. we we'll see you tomorrow and next week. So bye-bye.